This RC Beginner Series is brought to you by Horizon Hobby. Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh and this is Josh. Hi. And today is episode 10 of our Beginner Series. We've done it. The journey's coming to a close. We've gone all, but not for you. The yeah. journey's just beginning. Lord willing. You have a lot of exciting things to learn ahead of time, but this is the end of this, uh, what is this called? A beginner series. Beginner series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so today is the fun stuff. Today is, is the thing that we all aspire to as, as pilots. Today we're talking about aerobatics. Yes. And most of you, the second you lift off the ground, the first thing you're thinking is, I want to do a loop. I want to do a roll. I want to do what all those amazing people out on the internet are doing. You know, and sometimes you do them around. on accident. Yeah, sometimes it's unintentional. And other times, if you do it too soon, Bad things happen. There's consequences like this. So what happened? You hit what the happened? Oh. Oh. Not good. Not good at all. And we want to keep you from having those consequences because, you know, frankly, they'll happen on their own. Yeah, that's why we've put this at the at the very end. This is yeah. episode 10. This is the last thing we wanted to get to. And what our goal is to show, show you a couple key aerobatic maneuvers that you can combine in different orders, but will also give you a better understanding how the plane flies in different attitudes. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about loops. We're going to talk about rolls. Inverted flight. Flying inverted. Now, not all airplanes can create the same maneuvers. If you have a three channel, but only have rudder, elevator, and throttle, what can you not do? Uh, you can't do rolls? Can't do rolls okay. because rolls require ailerons. Yeah. On the flip side, say you're flying a flying wing and you want to do a wing over. Guess what? Not going to happen? Not going to happen because okay. you don't have yaw control. So certain maneuvers can be performed with certain airplanes. Right. And keep that in mind as you grow. Now there are ways that you can learn aerobatic maneuvers without putting your plane in danger. Right. And the simplest and best one is frankly a buddy cord. A buddy cord. All right. Yeah. Now let's say that Josh wants to learn how to do some aerobatics, but he's, hey, I want to learn kinda, how to do some aerobatics. He's kind of new to it, and he needs to rely on somebody like me, somebody with experience, somebody that really knows what they're doing. You are the flight guru. That's right. So what he's going to do is he's going to take his transmitter and yep. he's going to hook up to my transmitter with this buddy cord. Yes. When I make a mistake, because I will. He will. My friend Josh got here is going to bail me out. And I will. Now this does require something. You need to have an amazing, intelligent friend with skills that are unparalleled, nice like to meet Josh you. Scott. Okay, it's very important. If you have someone that's also learning, it's not going to do much good when you take not it really. over, right? It's uh, blind leading the blind. Yeah, but here's the beautiful thing about this hobby. Once you get into the hobby, you're going to meet amazing people with amazing skills, and, and people want to share their talent with you. So find someone that knows how to do these things, put a little buddy cord on your transmitter. If they're willing to show you, they can bail you out. Right. But say you're in a vacuum and you're learning on your own terms, or you don't have any buddies that fly. Or it's not very nice outside. Like in the middle of the winter, you know, yeah. a couple days from uh, Christmas. We got things called simulators. Simulators, and they're and getting today better we have the every Phoenix. day. The Phoenix RC simulator, it's by Horizon, actually. Yep. And the neat thing about the simulator, it actually enables you to use an actual legitimate transmitter. Yeah. It's not a transmitter that's just a, a joystick box. It physically is your transmitter. So as you learn to fly, you're holding the very thing that you're controlling your aircraft with. Yeah. And you've got all kinds of different terrain that you can fly in. Yep. And you actually have different types of weather yep. that, that take into effect too. Wind, all kinds of different So you stuff. can select your airplane, you can select your weather, you can select your terrain. It's a beautiful thing. And it all feels authentic. Exactly. It all feels like the real thing. And especially if you're getting in the hobby over the winter, you don't want to fly when it's windy and, and nasty and cold outside. Even if you can fly you know, simply, you know, where, where all the previous maneuvers we've been talking about, turning, climbing, diving, yeah. all those things, you want to be able to push the envelope in, in a controlled environment and learn those stick movements and get that muscle memory going. The beautiful thing about simulators is the reset button. Oh, that's great. You crash, you just hit reset, and you're good to go. And you're good to go. And you don't have that intimidation of, what if I crash? Yeah. So speaking of crashing, there's one thing you should always do if you're flying in real life. And what is that? Don't crash. Well, don't crash, but there, there's a certain thing that's our friend. It's called altitude. Yeah. Oh, three Alt mistakes. Three, three mistakes. mistakes high yeah, before three you mistakes try to do any loops, rolls, anything like that. Very, very important. And what we're going to start with is we're actually going to demonstrate these maneuvers with the Phoenix RC Flight Simulator. Yeah. All right. So the first thing we want to show you is a loop. So why don't you talk us through every step that you have to take in order to have a successful loop. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Actually, hand me that. Yeah. There we go. This is a plane. It's a plane. And planes do loops. That's, that's what we're that's gonna true. talk about right now, isn't it? It is. Go All ahead. Right. Well, I gotta hold a transmitter in my hand because okay. it's kind of important. Now the important thing with loops is keep in mind, as long as you have a three-channel airplane, most likely you can do a loop. But the first thing you wanna do is you wanna take it up at least three mistakes high. Yeah, this case is a little bit lower though. Okay. Perfect. Sorry. Perfect. Once you've gotten three mistakes high, you wanna point your plane into the wind. Now currently you should be at cruising speed, which is roughly about half throttle. But loops require energy, and energy can only come from getting speed through pointing the nose down or increasing your throttle. Okay. All right? 
But in this case, sometimes you want to do a little bit of both depending on how much power. But if you're flying a trainer, oftentimes you're going to have to get that nose down input to gain a little bit of speed. So that's another reason why it's very important to get a little bit of altitude underneath you. Right. Once you're into the wind, you're flying into the wind, you're at cruising speed, you're going to increase your throttle and increase your speed through the nose down and throttle mm -hmm. under both, depending on your power plant. Right. And then you're going to gently pull back. And now keep in mind, there's a, quite a bit of throttle speed at that time. As it's rotating up, you're going to start losing that energy. Hopefully have enough energy to get you right to the top. Okay. At this point here is when you're going to want to start throttling back and also decreasing your throttle just to, or your back pressure on your elevator just a little bit. Reason being is gravity is going to help us immensely. Right. And if you hold that back, it's just going to kind of make like a figure nine. It'll kind of come up and then cut real sharp. Right. The idea with a loop is to start and end the maneuver at the same point. Okay. All right. So you're at the very top here. We're decreasing our throttle and we're decreasing our back pressure. And we're going to hold that until we get all the way back down. Once it's at the level, this is at the point where you may have to actually give a little bit of forward pressure to stop the rotation and also increase your throttle to bring it back to the proper speed if you're flying too slow. It may be that you're flying too fast, you need to decrease the throttle even more. Okay. So once it's down here, you assess what it needs to happen and you go ahead and apply those controls. Now say you get into trouble when you're yes. doing a loop. What's a, good, what's a good thing to remember? Well, the first thing is, is not to panic. You're right. three mistakes high, you're safe. First thing that comes back is your throttle. Okay. Second thing that happens is you seek to make your wings level as quickly as possible. Right. So say you're up in here and you stall out right here. Yes. Okay? Bad things happen and it drops down. Uh -huh. First thing, throttle goes back. Yeah. Second thing is you take the look at the attitude and you just try to get those wings level, whether it's flying towards you, away from you, it does not matter. Once you get it back to level, then you can assess and bring it back around to you. Nice. And of course, remember with steering, when it's going away from you, everything is normal, but when it's coming towards you, everything's backwards. Yep, the steering or the aileron or rudder controls are backwards. Right. All right. Okay. You want to try it? Yeah. All right. Like for real? For real. Okay. All right, Josh. Well, the first thing, of course, altitude's our friend. So let's yep. go ahead and get you up to altitude, three mistakes high, and get the wings level. Now, in the simulator, there's no real wind, but this looks like a perfect direction. Just make sure you're flying away from you or across from you, not okay. towards you entering this. All right. At this point, once you get your wings level, you want to either dive or add power and or both and get the speed up properly so your plane doesn't stall out at the very top of the maneuver. That was beautiful. How was that? That was gorgeous. That was gorgeous. Sorry, I didn't even give you a chance to talk through it. I'm kind of hurt, but that's okay. So All right, go ahead and, and, and dive your plane. I wasn't considering your feelings. I know, I, I know, apologize. it's okay. Get a little bit of speed built up, uh -huh. and now carry that back pressure, hold that back pressure to the top, reduce your throttle. That was beautiful. Thanks. That's important. Do you see how it fell off the end just a little bit? Right, yeah. That's where you're going to use your rudder for tracking. If it starts falling off, that could be from lack of speed or from wind. Okay. But you can use your rudder to counteract that a little bit. And my rudder is still on the right here. Your rudder is still on the right. You got it, brother. So go ahead and get your wings nice and level. If you start a maneuver and your wings aren't level, you're going to get things like barrel rolls. Okay. And, and where it falls off to the side. Okay. All right. A little down pressure, back pressure, Oop, a little bit more speed. Okay. On a Super Cup LP, you darn near need to go to full throttle. Okay. And the bigger the loop you want to do, and also the po different power plants, if you do a big loop, you're going to need more speed, more power. And dive, gain speed. Hold back. Beautiful. Very good. Go. Now you release it just a little bit more than when, when I say release a little bit of back pressure, it's just ever so slightly. Okay. The whole goal is to start and end the maneuver at the exact same spot at the exact same altitude. Right. Okay. Go ahead and do it one more time. All right, here we go. Oh. Sorry. That was nice. There we go. You just almost lost too much speed at the very top, yeah. but it had just enough to carry it right, over. Let me try it one more time. Bring it around town. And back pressure. Hold it. Hold it. And there you there go. There we go. Beautiful. Nice. Beautiful. Thanks. Now just keep in mind, too much speed, too much input can hurt your airframe. So always try this. At reduced throttle settings, it's better to recover from that than to overstress your air, airframe. You did a loop fantastic, brother. Thanks. And now we're on to a different different maneuver, but also we're going to be flying with a different plane. Why is that? Uh, because it can't do what we need it to do. And that the is? The can't do. Uh, next is rolls. Rolls, exactly. Yeah. And what you need for rolls is aileron input. Right. Okay, you can have a three channel still with no rudder and just elevator, and ailerons, ailerons, and throttle. But you need that aileron. You need the ailerons. You need the bank control in order to execute a roll. So keep that in mind. If you're flying a Super Cup LP, you can do it, but it's not going to be pretty and it's not going to be proper. Right. Our goal is to teach you the proper stick movements for this. Yeah. So with the Trojan, um, unfortunately the, the simulator does not have the apprentice that we love so much. Oh no. But the Trojan is a fantastic, even though it's a Warbird, is a fantastic four channel trainer. Okay. So we're going to utilize that. Cool. But let's go and talk through a roll first. Yeah. First thing, what do we start with? A plane. A plane. Yeah. And then we got a plane. Right. Next thing, what do we do with that plane? We put it up in the air, three mistakes high. Three mistakes high, and we point it into? The wind. The wind, yes. And don't neglect that. And if possible, position yourself so it's flying away from you. Or across. Or across, not towards you. You right. have enough time to deal with those complicated things later. Okay. Once you're into the wind, 
we're gonna go ahead and pitch the plane up at a slight angle at cruising speed. You don't need excessive speed for a roll. So I'm gonna pitch it up this time. Just a slight touch up. Okay. So we're gonna put up just a touch angle, right. we're roughly half throttle, maybe two thirds, depending on your airplane. Okay. At this point, we're gonna neutralize our controls and we're gonna start our bank input. Okay. Whether to the right or to the left, but keep in mind the torque of the motor will enable your plane to rotate faster one way than the other. So if you notice that your roll is slower one way, Try it's it the, the other torque way. of the motor. Okay. It just don't be afraid of that. Okay. But just keep in mind it'll be slower. Right. All right. Once we're up here, the controls are neutralized. We're gonna go ahead and give our roll input. Okay, let's you just say bank the aileron like all the way. Yeah. Let's just say we're gonna do a bank to the right. Okay. You don't need to necessarily go all the way. Depending on your airplane, some may require full input, some may not. Okay. But you're gonna have to just feel this one out. In this case, I would go about two thirds of the way. It's a good safe measurement. It's not gonna be okay. too fast. Not gonna be too slow. Right. So we're gonna pitch up slightly. Pitch up. We're gonna neutralize our controls. We're gonna establish our, our bank. Right. As it's banking, the plane so should slowly be dropping. Just throw the throw the aileron all the way. Well, you could throw it all the way, but it may be a little bit over controlled. Maybe a little too fast. About okay. two thirds of the way is a good point to start out. Okay. So you don't over control your plane. Right. The plane's gonna start rolling, and as it's starting to rolling, it's gonna kind of follow an arc down about this. Right. Which is okay. why we pitched it up in the first place. Exactly. Okay. Continue your roll, and right about this point here is when you're gonna to wanna to start coming back. Counteract. Counteract, okay. exactly. At the point it is right roughly here, yeah. about seven eighths of the way turn, right. this is where you should be crossing over the center mark and actually counteracting the maneuver to stop it. Okay. Okay, so right when the plane's almost to level right. is when you should be at center going the other way. So if we started our roll to the right, we're gonna be moving the stick to the, to left. the left. And at that point we stop it right on its- uh, Right level. level. Right, right level, okay. perfect. Now at this point, the plane may be like this. Right. We need to go ahead and use our elevator to bring us back to level. Okay. All right? Yeah. Sound good? You want to try it? I'll give Let's it a shot. Let's do this. Okay. All right, Josh, go ahead and take it off and take your free mistakes high. Now, the Trojan is a fantastic four-channel trainer. Although it is a warbird, the, the flight characteristics are amazing. So for these maneuvers, it's perfect. It's just like the Apprentice, except it's a low wing, not a high wing. You go ahead and put it across from me, get those wings level. Yep. All right. Slight pitch up. There you go. Continue, continue, continue. I was. That was fantastic. And you did exactly what you should do. At the very end of that maneuver, yeah. you brought it back to level. Right. So the quicker you roll, the less chance that plane's gonna have an opportunity to fall out of the sky, basically. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, as you get more advanced, you can counteract this with rudder and also elevator. Uh, rudder when it's on its side and elevator when it's upside down. But just practice the, I, I like to call it the arcing roll. I don't know if it's called that in real life, but just practice rolling on an arc. Now, if you don't neutralize the elevator input when you're doing your roll, you're gonna get something called a barrel roll. Very cool maneuver, but not an actual axial roll like you're looking for. That's why it's so important to bring your stick back to horizontal or back to neutral um, once you establish that initial uh, back pressure. Right. Okay? Okay. I want to go ahead and do it a couple more times. Okay. It's very good with this not to just go ahead and do it once and then move on. Practice it over and over and over again and also in both directions. This is one key thing why we had you practicing climbing and diving and also left turns and right turns and counteracting those. All those maneuvers and all those skills are equipping you to bring the plane back to level. That was beautiful. Thanks. Fantastic. What's your thoughts? Is there any input you have beyond what I've talked about? Yeah, I think I like what you said about considering the torque of the motor because okay. it is kind of scary when you go the one direction and it, and it rolls really, really slow. Yes. You wonder when it's ever going to come out again. But go ahead and try it the other way then too. Yeah. Because it'll probably roll around much faster. Every airframe will fly a little bit different too. And keep that in mind, whether it's the Apprentice, whether it's a Parkstone Trojan, whether it's a scratch build, whether it's a flying wing, they're all gonna have different tendencies, different bank. Uh, you don't want to over control the first time. It's much better to take it three mistakes high and recover and feel how the plane behaves than over control and get yourself in a bad position. And I also noticed that the slower that it rolls around, the more altitude you lose. You're absolutely Another right. reason to stay three mistakes high. There is a maneuver called a slow roll, and when you do that slow roll, you're actually incorporating rudder input, elevator input, and then rudder input again, and then elevator input again as you do that whole roll. If you do it properly, you will not lose an inch of altitude, but the plane's actual directions as it's changing will actually the plane will be moving all over, kind of skidding through the air. It's a yep. really amazing maneuver and you can do it. You just need lots of practice of all the inputs at one time. Right. You did fantastic. Cool, thanks man. All right, you know what? This is a perfect opportunity to segue into something else that so many people are fascinated. One of the first questions you get when you go out in the field is, can you fly it what? Inverted. Inverted. Everyone loves the upside down thing and it's a blast. But keep in mind, when you fly inverted, there are some controls that are backwards. Right. What is that? Uh, the aileron stays the same, aileron right? Aileron stays the same. But it's the uh, elevator, elevator is backwards and, and your rudder is backwards. And the rudder is backwards, you yeah. got it. How about your throttle? Uh, throttle, throttle's backward. Throttle's, no, throttle's good to go. It stays yeah. the same. Yeah, you're good to go on throttle. <laughs> elevator and rudder are gonna be backwards, so keep that in mind when you fly. The perfect way to enter into inverted is either through a loop 
or through a roll. Okay. Okay? So nice. since we've done rolls and you're so good, why don't we start with a roll? Okay. And it's actually my favorite maneuver. Don't try to invert it until you know how to do a roll. Reason being is loop is good, but if you only learn a loop and then you go to inverted, you do something very crucially wrong if you get in trouble, and that is... You try to you try to pull out instead of roll out. Yes, yes. What happens is if you do go into inverted with your airplane through a loop, and you only know how to do loops, you don't know how to roll out, uh, what happens is you lose altitude and you panic. Well, what do you do? You pull back on that stick. Right. And you spike your airplane into the ground and give it a dirt nap. Uh-oh. We don't want that. We don't want that. But don't worry, we had a crash video previous to this, and we could show you how to fix it. But it's better if you don't have to fix it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and put your plane into the wind again. Okay. All right, go ahead and, and execute your roll. But this time, what you learned was stopping the roll. Yeah. Do it when you're inverted. Hey, hey, hey. Now what Josh did is he pitched it up a little bit, but he didn't foresee the fact that the plane was going to have a very steep downward angle when right. he stopped it at the very top. Yeah. At that point, you should actually begin forward pressure on the elevator and counteracting that to actually make the plane climb. And keep in mind, you're going to need more forward pressure to keep the plane level when it's inverted because the airfoil is upside down, unless it's symmetrical, but that's an advanced airplane and you probably aren't flying that kind of an airplane yet. So keep in mind, more forward pressure is going to be required to keep the plane level. Go ahead and turn it back on the wind. Let's try it again. Okay. Doing fantastic. Ready? Pitch up, roll, catch it with forward pressure. Uh, oh, so controls close. Controls are backwards. Exactly. Controls are backwards. And it's very, very instinctual to try to pull out, just like what you right. did there. Yeah. But the best thing to do is if you're gonna gonna get in trouble like that, just push that aileron over, finish off the roll. You're gonna lose far less altitude, you're not gonna stress the airframe, and you're gonna continue in the similar direction that you were. When you pull out, you end up in a completely opposite direction. Now, what if you're going away from you when you start this maneuver? There well, we you go. pull out. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh see, there's... that's what happens. All right, try to pull out. Yeah. All right, let's do this again. That's the benefit of simulators. You can reset instantly. Look at me, I'm already back. back up in the you're air. You're already back up in the air. Didn't hurt a bit, did it? All that, right. That's some quick repairs. A little back pressure. You level out. A little back pressure. Roll. Stop that roll. Forward pressure. There Forward. you go. Oh, close. And he did a, a roll out there. That was yeah. much, much better. Right. And he's flying at the perfect cruising speed, roughly two-thirds throttle. He has plenty of power to do what he needs. And also keep in mind, when you're inverted, the stall speed is also higher. So you need more speed to stay safe. If you start getting too slow, it's going to stall, and then the nose is going to drop. You're back in that pull-out thing again. Yeah. All right. Let me bring it around. You're doing fantastic. Always get your wings level. There you go. Roll. Little forward input. Oh, roll, so close, too far. but you rolled, rolled out. That's rolled good. Out. That's good. And you know what they call a, a failed attempt at inverted? You a, stink. No, a two-point hesitation roll. You stop, you're like, okay, okay, and then you finish it off. That's a two-point hesitation roll. That's a very advanced feature. How does that make you feel? Okay. There we okay. go. How's that? That's beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. And, and finish up. it off. There, there you go. go. Oh, scary. No. Even though it's on a scene. <laughs> you still get the nerves going, don't you? Yeah. The very important thing to remember is once you get inverted, just practice and go ahead and just practice going inverted, stopping it for a moment, and then going back to level again. That's going to put it in your brain to roll out, not pull out, but also it's going to give you the control inputs you need. Of course, we're three mistakes high. Yep. Where wings are nice and level, yep. go ahead and practice your roll, but stop it right at the point when you're going through there. The forward input. Ooh, very good. Caught it, caught it. There caught you it. go. You caught it. Excellent. Now finish your roll out. Excellent. Trees. Yes. A little rough in the middle of it, but you got all the stick movements right. You just have to catch it a little bit sooner. Right. So go ahead and try it again. Okay. This is a beautiful thing about simulators. We can just do it over and over and over again. Nobody gets hurt. No one gets hurt, especially not cameramen. There you go. Stop it. Oh, oh I that's okay. Okay. Let me try it again. You got it. I got that roll down though, real you good. You got the roll down, and that's good. And, and realistically, we're going boom, boom, boom through these. You should theoretically spend a whole battery doing loops, doing rolls. Maybe a whole year of your life. Not even a whole year. Maybe okay. a, a whole battery would be good. Uh, but you want to be able to do it where every aspect, all the failures are worked out of your system and you're very, very comfortable. Your heart doesn't race every time you do the maneuver. Then you add something new to it. I mean, like uh, my heart is racing right now. Even on the simulator, huh? Yeah. All right. Yeah, ready? Dip. Go for it. There you go. Perfect. Here we are. Nice. Now keep in mind, elevators backwards. Did you roll out or pull I, out? I rolled out. Perfect. I rolled out. Perfect. <laughs> I saw it in the corner of mine. Um, elevator is backwards, but your aileron is still the same. Once you establish this and you can do those two point hesitation rolls where you roll it inverted, roll back, then start practicing while you're inverted, go ahead and do a turn. And don't just do a turn and stop it and turn and stop it. Do a full circle. That way you keep your bank angle established and everything. Once you do your full circle, practice taking your full circle inverted and then going back and then roll out. And then do it the whole other way. 
then go to 90 degrees and start flying your pattern inverted. If you do it in that order, you're gonna get very comfortable with how the plane feels inverted in different bank angles and different attitudes, also how it looks, and it won't intimidate you too quickly. I'll try one more time. Let's go for it one more time. Okay. That was beautiful, look there at that. Go. Fantastic. Nice. Excellent work, brother. Thanks. Now, we talked about entering into inverted through rolls. You can also do it through loops, and guess what? It's just simply, at the very top, you give a little bit of forward uh, input. Uh, input. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so Josh, you've learned how to do inverted flight from a roll. Let's go ahead and talk about inverted flight from a, a loop. Okay. And those are the two ways you're going to enter into inverted, either through a roll and through a loop. Uh, so go ahead and your al altitude's good. Go ahead and get the direction you want. Get your wings level. Okay. Now, go with the exact same process as you were before. Enter into a perfect little forward pressure at the top. There we go. He did it so quickly, I didn't even have time to, to talk about the steps. Sorry about that. Everything's the exact same, but at the point that you're actually going to reduce throttle and reduce your, uh, your back pressure, you're actually going to push forward pressure. You're still going to reduce your throttle because you don't want that full throttle and that full momentum, especially if you're going to be down a little bit. You want to reduce it back to cruising speed. But even though you're, you're pulling into it, you still want to remember to roll out of it. Exactly, exactly. Now you can fly inverted ovals, which is really good, but you don't want to pull out of anything unless your altitude is the same as what you entered into the maneuver at. Right. So Josh, go ahead and, yep, you're flying kind of across from us, that's good. Bring your wings to level, increase your throttle, Pull back pressure. Now, right there, perfect forward pressure. Keep forward, keep that forward, and you rolled out. Nice, beautiful. Thanks. Now, do you know what happens when you when you do that? When you go into inverted and you roll out on the on the top? What? That's called a Cuban eight. A Cuban eight. If you eight. do that back to back, you have a Cuban eight, and that's how you can take different maneuvers and you can combine them in different orders and actually have different aerobatic maneuvers all together. Sounds international. It's pretty amazing stuff. So. Friends, practice your maneuvers, practice your loops, practice your rolls, then go to inverted flight and examine all the different aspects of combining, combining those three maneuvers and you're going to have a great time. Nice. All right? All right. I'd say that was a you success. Did I didn't even touch the controls once. Good job, man. Didn't need a buddy box or anything. It was awesome. Awesome. Great job. So let's recap. Yeah, sure. Okay. So we talked about loops. Yes. You need to have an elevator, rudder, aileron, and throttle to do a loop. Right. So basically a three-channel airplane can do a loop. Okay, and what you want to do is just pitch it down just a little bit to gain some speed, mm -hmm. and then you pull up. Once you get to the top, you want to decrease your throttle and also start decreasing your back pressure. Ever so slightly. Yeah. And continue your loop out and level it. But before we do our loops, we always want to make sure we have altitude as our friends. Yes, get three mistakes high yep. for keep, all of these. And keep in mind, too much speed and too much uh, control input can hurt your airframe. Right. So be careful with that. Okay, then we talked about rolls. Now rolls is a little bit different. You actually want to pitch the plane up a little bit before yep. you go into your roll. And make sure you neutralize your control. Once it's pitched up ever so slightly, neutralize your control. Otherwise, you're going to get something called a barrel roll. You want a nice axial roll. Okay. Um, the reason we pitch up is because once you pitch up and start rolling, your plane is going to naturally... It's going to lose some altitude. Lose some altitude. Finish off your roll, get your speed and your attitude back on your airplane. You're good to go. All right. And then we talked about flying inverted. And inverted, you can go into it either way. You can go into it through a roll or through a loop. But whichever way you go into it, you always want to remember, Roll out, don't pull out. Yes, you don't want to pull out of an inverted attitude unless you have altitude as your friend and you're very comfortable flying inverted. Reason being is when you pull out, the ground comes up very quickly. All right, and then you have some controls that are backwards when you're inverted too, right? Absolutely. And yep. That is? Elevator. Elevator and, and rudder. rudder are backwards, but ailerons stay the same. Exactly. And keep right. in mind, when you're doing rolls, you do need aileron control. You cannot do a roll if you don't have aileron in your plane. Okay. So if you have rudder and elevator, I'm not going to do a roll. Right. On the flip side, the rudder is very powerful for other maneuvers such as wingovers, but we'll cover those some other time. Yeah. So make sure you guys are good and comfortable doing this before you actually go out and try it in real life, especially if you're by yourself. Yeah. But if you have the means to, to do a buddy box or if you have the means to do a, a, a simulator, it's a great way to start. Simulators and buddy boxes will only benefit you through your whole RC journey. Um, they're always a benefit. It's always great. And also, when you get good and you want to share the hobby with someone else, Having something like this around is yeah. a perfect way to give them a great experience without having any carnage. Absolutely. All right, we want to thank you guys for watching, and thanks to Horizon Hobby for sponsoring this episode. And make sure if you've missed anything up to this point, you go back and check out the other nine beginner episodes. A lot of great helpful information, and we have a lot of helpful information below this in the links. Absolutely. And guys, thank you for making this possible. If you want to see any other educational series like this, say multi-rotor or, or gas or something like that, let us know. We'll let manufacturers know. We'll try to make it happen. Right. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Happy flying.